Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing today? Cut down my intro because I felt like it was getting too awkward and cringy. Anyways, it feels like it's been five ever since I filmed a video because of surgery and things like that, but I am back in front of the camera now, which feels really great and really good, so I am pumped to do today's video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the effects of testosterone, but I'm going to be touching more on the effects they don't really tell you about. Most of these are derived from my personal experience, so they are not guaranteed Guaranteed. It's not like, oh, the be-all, end-all, these are absolutely going to happen when you start tea. It's not anything like that, but these are something that I've experienced with my personal journey taking testosterone. So it's something that may happen, it may not happen, it really depends on you. My two years on testosterone was in September, so I know, I know it doesn't look like it, and I'm gonna get into why it doesn't look like I've been on tea for two years. Because we all have this perceived idea of after you're, oh, a year on tea, you look so hyper masculine and oh after your two years on T you're always cis passing and that's very not true. Again, it could be for you, it could be true for you, but in my case, it's not true at all. I'm a feminine person, it's in my personality, it's in my genes, and I present very androgynously, so when I go out in public people are like, gender? What's that? I don't know, it's an it. And I'm gonna touch on a couple of things as to why I still don't pass as cis, and like, effects of testosterone, the shit that I thought was gonna happen and then never happened, so let's stop rambling and actually start. Your voice will change. That is something that they tell you when you go into your appointment. That is the first thing you know doing your research that your voice is going to get deeper. However, what they don't tell you, and this may be perceived as common sense, for me it's not something I really gave any thought to, but it's definitely a reason why I don't pass as cis if that's a thing, is that your vocal inflection stays. I have a very feminine inflection to my voice and I'm very emotional and I go up and down with the pitches in my voice. And that's not something a lot of cis men do. And I feel like it's a reason to contribute as to why people don't perceive me as my gender is because my inflection is quite feminine and flamboyant and like seeming though stereotypically that of a gay man. They always tell you that you're going to get increased body hair and they are 100% correct. However, what they don't tell you is that odds are you're not gonna get it in the places that you want it. I look like a goddamn barbarian on my stomach. It is ridiculous. My chest? No, not at all. My stomach is so freaking hairy. But then you look at my face and you're like, oh, I have this, I'm doing No Shave November, so don't judge me. But I have this really like splotchy, like I can pull on it, this stubble, but it doesn't grow in fully. And, and I've been on testosterone for two years and I can't grow decent facial hair. I'm just barely getting sideburns and you can't even see them like in the viewfinder of the camera. Like you cannot see my facial hair, even though it's there and it doesn't grow in properly. And then it's gonna grow all weird on your legs. Like if you've been growing out your hair on your legs, like before you got on tea, it's gonna be weird. And like, they don't tell you that when you go in for your appointment to start tea. They do tell you a lot that over time your body structure will change. However, in my case, what that meant was that I gained 100 pounds. Now, part of that was due to the mental illness that I was dealing with at the time. Part of that was due to my overeating a little bit, not excessively. But I literally gained 100 pounds after I started testosterone. Now, that's fine. I like being fat. I enjoy being big. That's fine and good. But I'm way curvier than I was before. Which is definitely something that contributes to me not being perceived as my gender when I'm out in public. They see an hourglass figure, whether I'm fat or not, and they immediately associate that with the female gender. Like when I got on tea, I was expecting, oh, my hips are gonna slim down, my shoulders are, might get a little bit broader. No, that didn't happen. And it might for you. Again, this is my personal experience, but it didn't happen with me, and I was a little bit disappointed. And with them informing you of all these good changes, you could kind of assume that you would pass you know how I feel about that word, but this is the word that I'm using. In public, more than you would when you were pre-T. However, in my case, I pass less. Like, I never pass in public anymore. Like, it's so bad. I will go out to eat, and it honestly doesn't affect me. Like, I'm over it. Like, I don't fucking care what people perceive my gender as anymore. Like, I know my gender. That's good. As long as my friends and family respect that, that's really all I need in my life. But, like, we'll go out to eat, and they'll be like, I'll be with my mom, and they'll be like, hey, you ladies want a table? How are you girls doing tonight? And I'm just like, 
This feels great. Also, they do not tell you how fucked up your mood and your emotions are gonna get because you assume that like the mood and emotions and mood swings and everything like that goes a hand in hand with estrogen. However, everything like that is going to shift and change and it's gonna fuck with your emotions when you start on tea. So like when I got on tea, I was fine for a couple months and then my depression just got so bad. Um, it got better and I'm able to like cope and deal with it now but it was it was such a drastic change and it was not something that I was expecting. So I have that in the back of your head that if you do have issues with that, maybe prepare yourself a little bit for something like that because it probably will happen and it really sucks to not expect that. And I think that's all I really have about, like let me see, I've got my notebook here of my points because I'm a loser and I plan things. That's all I really have of the effects of testosterone or lack thereof. And I hope this video was a little bit informative to you. I hope that it helped you out a little bit, whether it's actually going to happen to you or not, or it's just you listening to my opinion and my experiences. I think it's pretty cool that you stayed till the end of this video, and I really appreciate it. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. If you're on hormones, what kind of effects has it had on you? And are you going to go on hormones in the future? Are you going to go off hormones? If you're not trans, do you know anyone who's trans that's experienced this kind of stuff? You should also totally subscribe to my channel because I post two videos a week here one on Tuesdays and one on Thursdays, so that's two videos a week coming your way. And we are like hyper close, we might have hit it by the time I post this video, to 1500 subscribers, which is fucking nuts. So I really, really do appreciate that, I appreciate all the love and support. Also, I wanted to take this time to give a little bit of a shout out to Alex Neal, who is my very first patron on Patreon. They're absolutely amazing, and the thing is, is that I can't figure out how to message you, so Alex, if you are watching this, please comment on this video or shoot me a message on Twitter or somewhere so I can give you the kind of recognition that I would like to give you because for some reason it won't let me message you on Patreon so I really want to be able to give you the kind of recognition and support and love that you deserve for being my first patron. That's all I've got today. I love you guys and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Alright, bye!